Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Assange is back! Good to see he was acquitted and allowed back in the country. You know, if you squint, kinda looks like Kevin Rudd and... No, no, I just haven't had my coffee yet. Hashtag groggy! Just in case you missed it, Kevin Rudd fronted a sanity inquiry about media diversity in Australia, and there was some gems in it. However, unfortunately, it was an hour and 43 minutes long, so I got Miss Love to sift through it. But then I looked at the gems, and they were great. On point as always, Mr. Prime Minister. I, uh, sorry I didn't look at it all myself. I've been very busy, and I will get around to reading that book that I promised that I'd read of yours, but, uh, you know, it's just on a long list that includes above it, because it's very important to get this out of the way just annoying. But then after that, I promise I will read your book that I'm pretty sure the cover is just recycled from your very unsuccessful stint into country and western singing. Small town hopes. That's me on the banjo, you know. I now welcome the Honourable Kevin Rudd, former Prime Minister of Australia. I understand the information yeah, on parliamentary is. privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence has been provided Atta to boy, you. And he's looking pissed. The Hansard record. I haven't seen him this angry since the teleprompter f***ed up his Chinese translation. He's gone for the kill. Ni hao, motherfuckers. Okay, let's just start off with, oh no, it's a clip of Sky News. So just to put this into context, you are watching Friendly Geordies react to Kevin Rudd, who is reacting to Alan Jones. I bet when you were eight years old, you didn't think you'd be venturing down that wormhole. They've made this point, haven't they? It's great reset. There'll be no money, no private property, no democracy. Some big outfit will take over all our debt, all our debt, we'll have no debt, whatever, your credit cards, your bank loans, all that sort of stuff. But in return... Jesus, Alan Jones is so drawing. As soon as he speaks, I feel like a dog. Yo, sit down, roll over, now go watch me play Franklin D. Roosevelt in Annie. Can we make that a meme template, please? Alright, we'll get back to the future of our democracy. <laughs> It's so funny that it was in this man's hands for 25 years. You're gonna have no money, no private property, no democracy. Every key decision um, in what you do for a living, how much stuff you consume, as you've said, will be decided by a remote, unaccountable elite. This is not conspiracy. This is what these people are saying. I know that the reason Kevin Rudd is playing this is because he's saying, do you see? It's very troubling what they're pumping into the minds of the public. But he's so engaging that even I'm thinking, yeah, no, no, no. you've got two hours to talk, Kev. Give me five minutes. Like this video and subscribe if you agree. I'm trying to trick some of Sky News' massive audience into something here. Anyway, we'll just show you some of the questions that Kevin Rudd was thrown because I honestly forgot. Even when I'm interviewing him, I'm always reminded, God damn, he is good at explaining things. It really makes sense why he was Prime Minister of this country, despite having the entire media nexus against him. It's because he actually says sentences done good. Mr Rudd, in our line of work, uh we speak to journalists all the time, and I speak to quite a few regional journalists on a regular basis, and uh, they would say they've never received a call from Mr Murdoch to tell them what to write. How does... Uh, I'm genuinely interested no. in... No, I'm weighing in. I'm sorry, Rudd. I'm sure you've got a really good answer to this, but at that point... I have never in my life got a call from Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, where where are you reporting again? Tun Curry. She even said regional journalists. I don't think a guy that heads a global news empire is going to be ringing up people in condobal and saying, How's the sheep count, Andrew? Well, it's down a bit from last year. Right, here's what you're going to do. You're going to dig a hole. You're going to bury that story in that hole. And that hole is going to be so deep that if you find opals, you're going to give them to me. Oh, no. This is the only possible way to be influenced by a boss in an organization. You know when you walk into a Vietnamese guy's house and you think, Hey, Hua, and then you notice that there's a bunch of shoes out there and you think whoop and then you take them off that happens in every environment you're ever in including a news organization Rupert Murdoch might not be calling you up he doesn't have to he has a bunch of lieutenants and colonels that he calls up and those lieutenants and colonels one of them is on record writing I can't remember which book it was in but I remember the editor saying what happens after working in the Murdoch Empire for a while is that you look at the news and you think, how would Rupert Murdoch want this reported? And if you're working at Fairfax, how would Peter Costello want this reported? And if you're working at the ABC, how would Matilda at age 100 want this reported? How does media concentration impact on public interest journalism? <laughs> and how are 
uh, those front pages, um, how do they come to be when you've got journalists who I would describe, um, for the most part, are incredibly hardworking and go into the profession with really noble pursuits? Well, I wouldn't say that from the journalists I know. I'd say that 99% of them came into it with the pursuit of putting in their Tinder profile. Works at SMH. Is that a hot job? No? Okay, I guess I'll just continue looking for love then. But just touching on the idea of a front page, that is the true weapon of the press because every gas station that you walk into, every news agency that you walk past has a headline that says, Anthony Albert Wheezy. Labor insiders saw him coughing the other day, which has sparked questions within the caucus. Is he too unhealthy for the job? The other huge power of newspapers and why the press keeps printing them is their scripts. No one is reading them except for people in McDonald's that are bored and people that work in radio and television. And they are pretty much just reporting the news exactly how it is written in those papers. To quote Ned Flanders, that's all okay because the journalists had good intentions. Oh yes, finally we get to a liberal senator. Those are the best because they are so incompetent. Otherwise they'd be in the lower house. The Senate, welcome to favour country. Senator, what state are you from, please? Victoria. Pardon? Okay, so I'm from People's Republic of Queensland. And uh, yeah. we, we call our stand a stand these days, so... <laughs> hey, you stole my bit! That's my thing that I say! I said Berejiklis stand! Like a week ago, in fact, now that I think about it, you definitely came up with that first. Look, this is my main point. The people that are writing for The Telegraph should be writing for The Simpsons. They're good. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, that's in terms of a character assassination... So the question is, is that Senator... Um... Dan made disaster. See, you can't compete with that. If I had the option of seeing Dave Chappelle live or someone just flicking over 30 years of Telegraph front pages, I'm picking the front pages, which is just pretty much a plug for my show, friendlygeordies.com. Get your tickets now. I think it's a very fair piece of journalism. Thank you, Chair. So actually that's editorial opinion and he's entitled to that. But no one in a month of Sundays in any rational debate would describe that as a piece of news reporting. Damn. Slam made disaster. God, he's so good at getting his point across and not sounding angry. Every time I ever see him talk, I just imagine a meadow of reeds flowing through the breeze. The breeze will bend me one way or the other, but I will continue to grow. We shouldn't fear some publisher in the United States, in Manhattan, then flicking the switch then off you go uh, as your carotid artery is extracted uh, in a journalistic sense in the weeks and months that follow and often with no trace lines uh, in terms of how that came about. It just shouldn't be the case. It's just bad for the show. It's bad for the parliament. No one should be frightened of Murdoch. But let me tell you, he's a frightening sort of guy because of the power that he wields. It's chilling, isn't it? You remember in the interview when he was talking about how it weighed on his mind the entire time he was Prime Minister, every announcement that he was about to make, thinking, fuck, fuck, what's he gonna say now? That's what happens. Murdoch is so powerful. I don't think that even I have fully comprehended this before. Murdoch is so powerful that he makes Prime Ministers one of his editors. I think we all have to step back and say, boss. We have the single highest concentration of media ownership in print in this country of any other advanced democracy in the world. Yet somehow we think that this is normal. It ain't. And the fact that we're all worried about, God, I wonder what the Rupert's gonna think about what I've just said, or Lachlan, or the, the henchman who you'll have in here soon, um, as members of parliament and the rest, just shouldn't be the case. But that's a product, Senator Carr, of their ownership. I think we need to do it again. <clears throat> Bows. Anyway, that's my contribution. You seem to have this whole media thing handled pretty well, Mr. Rudd. And I pointed out the, uh, the case study of someone that they were seeking to eviscerate uh, on the pages of the Daily Telegraph at the time. And I said to David Pempathy, why do you do that? What, what? To which his answer to me was, chillingly, quote, because we can, unquote. I never forgot Damn. that. And we just shouldn't be in a position where any of us fear that happening to any of us. Whether it's from auntie, that doesn't really happen much there. But with the News Corporation mob, they love it. 
They celebrate it, as evidenced by the comment to me by Pemberthy. Jesus. Doesn't that say it all? That is the entire how to solve a problem like Friendly Geordie's video condensed into a minute. I told you the guy was consults. The whole point of that video is that the press is not there to inform you. It is pretty much just a tool that is used to hit the enemies of the proprietor. But he just gave evidence of that instead of me just being like, eh, well, that doesn't read like it said you did. Well, I'm going to put a really bad slant on that. Like the video. My question goes to your assertion that the Murdoch has a monopoly here in Australia. There's three types of media outlets in this country, print, media and online. The largest growing uh, media outlet is online. The declining, the mm -hmm. other two, uh, both media, uh, television and um, uh, print, are both declining. What percentage of free-to-air networks do the Murdochs own in Australia? Well, the only... Um Oh, well, in terms of free-to-air free television, you're talking free -to -air about... Free-to-air television, sorry. Well, of course they don't. Um, That's right. So. Oh, yeah. Rupert Murdoch doesn't own any free-to-air television. Therefore, how can he 70% of newspapers that all the other journalists that are on television and radio use as a direct script? We have an entire channel outlining how they do it over and over again. Have any influence on television? Do something in your spare time is fun. Go look up what Liberal senators did before they were senators. Look at this guy, Jared Rennick. What's his qualifications? A bachelor in commerce. What does that qualify you for? To operate a till? This is the man that Albanese once famously stated things at the Bureau of Meteorology as part of a big global conspiracy and as Michael West pointed out is sadly true but not in the way that he thinks it is. Because guess who donates to the Bureau of Meteorology? The fossil fuel industry. What possible interest could they have in donating to it other than to mess with the numbers? Because we're trying to figure out if we can frack clouds. We'll call it frowding. Is this inquiry not based on a lie? Well, Senator, what I have said repeatedly is that Murdoch has a print monopoly. That's I've right, and that's I've... only a part of the news network. Ah, you're such a dead sh and You look like the unsuccessful brother of Dick Smith, and I need to check your genealogy to see if that's true or not. And that any form of monopoly uh, is unacceptable as a matter of principle. Having 70% uh, of the print readership in this country is a problem. And the reason it's a problem, Senator, is because it bleeds through to all the other platforms yeah, over time. Yeah, he knows it. Yeah, That's he... why he holds on to it. <laughs> so arrogant. Saying to the one guy that broke liberal dominance over the last 30 years, yeah, this guy gets it. I was a bit iffy about him, but nah, he's smart because he thinks what I reckon. Secondly, uh, I'm not sure which state you come from, Senator. Queensland. Yeah, well, in Queensland, as you know. What a surprise. No, it's 100% monopoly. And so under those circumstances, um, I, that is um, uh, doubly unacceptable because it bleeds through to the rest of the platforms over time. Uh, it doesn't have to be owned by Murdoch to bleed through to them. That's why Murdoch retains these, shall we say, uh, old investments because they provide a large part of the content and shape much of the debate yeah. which the country then has. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Senator. Mm, mm, that's very true. Look, really the only reason I'm doing this is because I think that like a lot of you, you won't watch the full hour and 43 minutes, so I'm just trying to condense it to Kevin Rudge best burns. <laughs> and get ad rev off it. Have you ever leaked information while you were a politician uh, about a colleague or an opinion uh, to a News Corp journalist? Well, Senator, if we're going to enter into the, the uh, debate about all of our individual relationships with journalists over the last 10 or 20 years, it would make for a, a good session, which would probably take us a few hours. So... Um, oh, we can just answer the question, simple right. yes or no, we do. Have you? No, I haven't. Never. No. You're unique in this building. Hey? Yeah. No, good for you. Yesterday. Good for you. Okay. Just, could you just Sen answer Senate. the question? Sorry, I have Sen one more question about yeah. regional Queensland, because... This guy sucks. I thought that if you were in Parliament, you would be an expert. A judo black belt in burns. Verbal burns. That guy's response to everything. Uh, uh, how did the lawyer in Law and Order SVU question the suspect again? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yes or no question. Yes or no. Yes or no. The Senate is a f***ing circus, and it's the only reason I think it shouldn't be abolished. Because it's just way more entertaining than going to Cirque du Soleil. I am sick to death of watching a guy smoke a cigar and then blow it into a bubble. How much better is, I'll kill you, I'll f***ing kill you. So my hometown of Chinchilla, just like your hometown of Nambour, has lost its maternity ward, which was shut down by state Labor governments, okay? But like 
your hometown of Nambour and my hometown of Chinchilla, they now have poker machines. Now, you made a comment earlier on about how your government, the Goss government, didn't no longer scratch each other's backs. Your former boss, you were Chief of Staff to Wayne Goss at the time, when he brought in poker machines to the state of Queensland. Now, this is just embarrassing that this guy is going head to head with Kevin Rudd. You may as well just replace him with one of those monkeys in Bali that steals your water. They'd have the same level of intelligence. Oh, and he's got a bottle of water there. That's why I'm not ripping his face off, because I'm content. All right, in the spirit of the fact that we skipped over a long discussion about Fox News, I'm going to have to say, Mr. Rudd, I'm going to give you the final word. Well, Senator Hansard Young, um, observing uh, the pattern of reporting uh, uh, through, for example, the pages of the Australian newspaper, which is the Murdoch uh, media masthead nationally, during the period of uh, our several attempts to introduce a carbon price into this parliament, first the um, carbon pollution reduction scheme, both iterations, um, and then uh, finally uh, the carbon tax under the Gillard government is that mysteriously, when we ever got to the conclusion uh, of one of these internal, eternal internal processes to try and get this legislation through, you would see um, one after the other, uh, a set of stories uh, leaked uh, to the Australian by major carbon companies uh, designed to derail the political and policy process. And these were plastered routinely across the front page. And I recall a number of these stories were absolute factual bunkum, but they were given the prominence of the National Daily in order to derail the debate. And so you know how this, uh, this, uh, this institution operates. If it's plastered over the front page of The Australian or if it's plastered over the front page of The Daily Telegraph, it's a reasonable bet that it will dominate the first half of question time on a particular day. Mm. And of course, that's what you then contend with. Only to discover in a day or two's time that in fact the story that's plastered authoritatively over the front page of the paper about a, an imminent mine closure as a result of an action which we hadn't even taken by that stage is in fact itself bunkum. But by that stage the caravans moved on and the tactical political objective is achieved. So my, the basis for my observation is simply that and that is through the umbilical relationship then between Mitchell and, uh, and the Australian Mining Industry Council on the one hand, and uh, people like uh, the then editor of the Australian, Chris Mitchell, who would simply run a tag team uh, in order to uh, derail uh, the carbon price project. Thank you. That hits a little too close to home because after experiencing, I guess, a trillionth of what Kevin Rudd has, that is exactly the tactic of the press. They just hurl up any accusation at all. Doesn't matter if it's accurate or not, they chuck it at you, you can't do anything about it because if you go to the press council, they're all mates with them. This will blow your mind, but people that are on the press council are from the press, who'd have thunk it? And so they're not gonna do anything about it. No one does anything about it. Those articles just stay up forever. It doesn't matter if they're true or not. Remember when we were talking to Kevin Rudd and there was just a mention of Ugate and you could just see the anger in his eyes because Ugate never happened. I knew it didn't happen, but the average Australian still comes up to him to this day and thinks, how dare you spend 20 years in public service to get a slight discount on a you? It never happened. Doesn't matter, I think it did, and that's enough of a reason for me to fucking yell at you 10 years after you've been out of office. The longer I'm in this game, the more I realise damn Labor politicians have it tough. They have no friends at all. They get tarred with so much shit, their entire personal lives dragged up just to delegitimise them. Same thing happens to me, but just on a much smaller scale. And what's the thanks that they get at the end of it? I'll tell you what the thanks is. You're gonna buy Kevin Rudd's brand spanking new book. There it is, links in the description. I'm not getting any money for it. I just think that he's making a really good argument, which is, Go negative, not you, you like the video and make sure that you press subscribe and leave very positive comments to me because I'm feeling fragile. It's actually looking at Kevin Rudd talking about that stuff brought up post-traumatic stress disorder. Thanks for watching. Please share and comment below. Comment.
hand while you're at it. Go by just annoying. It's a big hand. Whoa!